So you've been losing your hair for some time and you've decided, I have to know what's going on. Why am I losing my hair? Before I tell you why you're losing your hair, I'm going to tell you why you're not losing your hair. And here's the list of reasons people think they're losing their hair when they really aren't. They think they're losing the hair due to frequent hat wearing, frequent sweating, frequent showering, cheap shampoos, frequent brushing and combing, daily normal stress at home or on the job because you don't take vitamins or supplements, poor dietary habits, poor hygiene, too much sun or not enough sun. None of these are significant reasons for hair loss, certainly nothing that you would notice cosmetically. So if you think that you're losing your hair because of that, uh, you're incorrect. You don't know how many patients I've had come in here who believe that they're losing their hair because they've been wearing baseball caps so frequently. But it really isn't because of that. Now here are the real reasons for why you're losing your hair. Genetic reasons, trauma to the scalp, significant body trauma, and intense psychological stress. Not the psychological stress we all go through every day with paying our bills and all of that. I'm going to go into this later, but real intense psychological stress like grief, loss, massive heartbreak, these sorts of things. Now by way of summary, I want to go into the classifications of male pattern baldness. Male pattern baldness is not random. It follows a specific pattern. Now you don't have to be a male to have male pattern baldness. In fact, there are males who have female pattern baldness and there are females who have male pattern baldness. Years ago, a doctor named Otar Norwood had created a chart that shows the natural progression of the most common patterns of hair loss. And the reason this is significant is anybody can look at this chart and see if they're losing their hair due to normal genetic factors or if there's something else involved. So let's say you have two strange patches on your head and it doesn't match the typical male pattern baldness. It doesn't mean it's not male pattern baldness, but it certainly indicates that there may be some other process going on there that may be treatable. It also helps the hair transplant doctor to plan out your hair transplant procedure because it's very helpful to know that if a patient comes in at a certain level of hair loss, it's extremely helpful to know where his hair loss may progress to. So if we know that in advance, we can strategize so that we can make the most of the donor area and the most of the hair transplant. Diagnosing hair loss. Well, that's pretty easy. It's sort of like diagnosing a burnt out light bulb. Uh, and it really is almost anybody can make the diagnosis. The question is how accurately can you make the diagnosis? Uh, like I said above, uh, hair loss for genetic hair loss uh, follows certain predictable patterns as laid out by Dr. Norwood. So all you really have to do is when somebody is saying, hey, I may be losing my hair, uh, just look at the uh, pattern chart that you see here and see if you fit into the chart and if over time you're fitting more and more into the chart. And that's basically the simplest way to make the diagnosis of male pattern or hereditary hair loss. There's another thing you can do that I came up with over the years to gauge if you're losing significant amounts of hair. I call it the comb hold test. So what you do is you just take a regular comb, you put it into areas of your hair and if it holds it then you know that you have more than likely enough hair in that area to, to have significant coverage and not have to worry about replacing it just yet. If the comb just keeps sliding out of the hair, then you may have lost so much hair that it's time for you to look into uh, some sort of hair loss treatment. Another way to check for hair loss is to do a biopsy, and this is something your doctor would have to do. It could be a hair transplant specialist or it could be a dermatologist but they'll biopsy uh, the area where the hair was, and this way they can look at the skin, they can look at the follicles, and they have a means of telling what may or may not be the cause of the hair loss. You may have hair loss due to some sort of inflammatory condition which can be treated with a steroid. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean it's male pattern baldness. It could be the beginning of male pattern baldness, but most of the time it isn't. Most of the time, if you have an odd patch here or there, it's due to some other treatable cause of hair loss. Which brings us to the treatments for hair loss. Let's go over a few of the treatments offered by physicians today. There's of course hair transplant, which is at the top of the list because it is the best of the best. That's why I decided to specialize in it. The next one is finasteride. That's the hair loss pill. There's dutasteride, which is another hair loss pill. There's minoxidil, also known as Rogaine, and that's a topical that's put on the scalp. There's uh, something now that's being hyped all over the internet to the point of almost illegality called platelet-rich plasma. This is something that has to be done in your doctor's office. Blood is drawn from the arm and it's uh, processed and then injected into the scalp. 
Uh, I think it's quackery. You can look at our treatment section for details on that. Uh, steroid injections for hair loss. Low light laser therapy, LLLT, more quackery. Expensive shampoos, uh, shampoos that are supposedly fortified with uh, hair growing, FDA cleared or FDA approved hair growing medications and vitamin. We'll go into all of that in a different section, but these are the various treatments that are being offered. But the only two that I think are worthwhile are the hair transplant and the finasteride. If you want to learn more about any of these topics, just click the link on the page.